Welcome parents, family, staff, and most importantly, welcome eighth grade students to Socrates Valley Middle School's eighth grade celebration for 2020. I'm Principal Lane. Each year at about this time, we say congratulations and good luck to our eighth grade students as you take the next step in your future. For most of you, this marks the end of a five year journey from grade four through grade eight here at Socrates Valley Middle School. During that time, we have all watched as you have met challenges, made mistakes, overcome adversity, and experienced much success. We hope you look back on those years fondly and with pride. Today we celebrate the successes and take stock in the fact that ch the challenges that you met along the way have helped shape you into the tremendous young adults that you have become. So, before I introduce the people who will recognize you for all your efforts, I just want to say, be proud of all that you have achieved so far, and good luck as you make your way across the field behind the middle school to Socrates Valley High School, where you will take the next step in life's journey. I'd like to now introduce our guidance counselor, Mrs. Varchiano. Good evening, my name is Amy Vacchiano and I'm the school counselor here at SBMS and the Building Assets Reducing Risks Coordinator. First, I would like to um, say congratulations to all of the 8th graders. I have known many of you for a very long time, one of you since birth, <laughs> and um, I just can't believe that you are going to the high school next year. Um, this year, all 8th grade students have participated in the Building Assets Reducing Risk Program, or BAR. The BAR program uses strategies that focus on relationships, data, and student strengths. This in turn help our students succeed. In addition, BAR seeks to develop student assets. We focus on increasing competence, caring, connection, belonging, and skills and resilience. Tonight, I am privileged to um, give the BAR awards. First, for positive identity. This is for um, students who exemplify what it means to believe in oneself and work toward future goals. This award goes to Evelyn Bennett and Aaron Doyle. For positive values, for making choices based on what's important, regardless of what your friends think. Audrey Barrett and Bethany Scott. Boundaries and expectations, for accepting and respecting school and classroom rules, striving to meet the standards, and encouraging peers to do the same. Bryce Deshays and Bo Miller. Commitment to learning, for seeing, for seeing every experience as a learning opportunity. Adriana Perini and Lexi Surrett. Empowerment Award, for being a responsible and reliable mem member of our community. Hannah Mason and Caleb Vacchiano. Social competence, competencies, for exemplifying the skills necessary to work with, empathize with, and respect others. Emma Belanger and Parker Day. Constructive use of time for taking advantage of time given in school to complete work, managing extracurriculars with the schoolwork. That award goes to Francesca Muccio and James Ritter. Support for exemplifying what it means to be supportive of peers and the learning environment. Carter Belanger and Haley Wing. And this year's overall BAR award, uh, this is a special award to two students who have seemed to demonstrate all of these that I just mentioned um, throughout the school year. This goes to Connor Cormier and Elise St. Pierre. Congratulations. Okay, so in addition to being a school counselor and um, the bar coordinator, I'm also a member of the attendance team. Um, so Mr. Lane and Mrs. Logan and Miss Tracy also help me. And our main goal is to improve the attendance at the middle school. As students know, strive for five is our motto, which means each student's goal was to miss fewer than five days, sorry, of school um, in one whole year. We've had many eighth grade students who have reached this goal. First, um, are students who missed one to five days. So for um, five days, we had Amber Cook, Bryce Deshays, Chandler Hall, Alana Ragsdale, 
Chantel Rummery, Alexa Schroeder, Julia Tuttle, and Katherine Welch. For students who only missed four days, Logan Bernier, Daniel Colson, Lindsey Fox, Zach Franklin, James Lovell, Michael Lovell, Elise St. Pierre, and Madison White. For three days, Audrey Barrett, Bethany Scott, and Riley Taylor. Only missing two days, Jack Buecher, Leah Dole, Thomas Dunchy, Olivia Marion, Ruby Pattengill, Paul Schroeder, Cash Samard, and Haley Wing. Missing only one day in the whole year, Evelyn Bennett, Carter Belanger, Alana Ford, Braden Markazich, Brady Metcalf, Francesca Muccio, James Ritter, Chloe Roy, Alex Sargent, Lexi Surrett, and Kayla Vacchiano. And the last group of students um, are students who have perfect attendance this year. And we had quite a few kids, so congratulations, that's quite a feat. We had Emma Belanger, Parker Day, Nathan DeAngelis, Aaron Doyle, Colby Hanscom, Austin Howell, Brooke LaJoy, Hannah Mason, Adriana Perini, Owen Tarvers, and Gage True. Um, I have two more awards to give. Um, the next one um, is for the most improved attendance. This goes to a student who had 11 absences last year and only one this year. Way to go, Alex Sargent. Uh, the last award is very special. This student has not missed a day of school her whole time at Socopy Valley Middle School. That is close to 875 days of school. What an amazing accomplishment. Congratulations, Hannah Mason. We have a, we have a certificate to go for ice cream because that deserves an ice cream. Um, and next we have Ms. Johnson who will um, present an art award. Good evening. Unfortunately, Mrs. Kerrigan couldn't be here today, um, but she did leave a note that she wanted to give an award to a student who has shown that she's open to exploring new art techniques, develops her craft, and most recently during distance learning, has shown exemplary effort and persistence in her learning. And so for the eighth grader, who has demonstrated ongoing commitment, creativity, and openness to explore art and art class, the Art Award this year goes to Lexi Surrett. Hi there. I didn't give birth to any of you, <laughs> like Mrs. Vacchiano, but I have known many of you since you were in kindergarten, and I'm going to miss you all. Philanthropy comes from uh, the ancient Greeks, and it means to love people, and it is born of kindness. The Girl Scouts, like Sockby Valley Middle School, honor kindness and giving back. Today we want to honor Olivia Marion, who has built the Gaga Pit out back. I don't think a single teacher has ever won. <laughs> I tried. Uh, and they played it all year round, and it was great. And we want to thank Olivia Marion for that contribution to our school. We also have some other students who donated their time and effort as part of MLTI, which is uh, Maine Learning and Technology Institute. Maine was the first in the country to allow 7th and 8th graders to have computers. And uh, we have a conference every year where students teach students and teachers uh, technology. And there are a number of students that took part in that, and I'd like to, to mention all of their names today. Alana Ford, Chloe Roy, Anna McCarty, Caleb Bacchiano, Bo Miller, Duncan Brewster, Francesca Muccio, Paul Schroeder, Haley Wing, Evelyn Bennett, Carter Blanger, Maddie White, Parker Day, Ethan Lebrecht, Gage True, and Connor Cormier. Thank you for your leadership and good luck to you all. I'm 
am Mrs. Ritter, and I am here on behalf of Special Olympics, and it gives me great joy to honor our next eighth grader. The Sacopee Valley Special Olympics coaching staff is proud to honor Michael Lovell with the Special Olympic Team Spirit Award. Michael attends all Special Olympic events with a bright smile and a positive attitude, whether it's a competition or a fundraiser. He works hard and motivates others around him to do the same. Michael is the biggest supporter of his teammates and his coaches. Congratulations, but more importantly, thank you, Michael, and good luck in high school. Michael will be receiving a water bottle, 2020 Sacopee Valley Special Olympics Team Spirit Award. Congratulations. I'm doing back to back. So I would like to switch gears and throughout the year here at Sacopee Valley Middle School, we honor students for their success on report cards. We were not able to hold our second trimester honor roll assembly in March and we would like to take a minute to recognize those students who from Thanksgiving break all the way through March earned a 2.8 or higher on their habits of work for the second trimester. The recipients of the second trimester honor roll in alphabetical order are Audrey Barrett, Evelyn Bennett, Logan Bernier, Carter Belanger, Duncan Brewster, Aaron Doyle, Lindsay Fox, Olivia Marion, Hannah Mason, Bo Miller, Francesca Muccio, Ethan Patterson, Jillian Phillips, Adriana Perini, Alexa Schroeder, Elise St. Pierre, Lexi Serret, Caleb Vacchiano, Madison White, and Haley Wing. Congratulations for all your hard work. And returning to the stage is Ms. Johnson. I am here to um, give some awards for our FISH program, and so if you're not familiar with it, we use the FISH program uh, to promote a positive culture here at Sacred Valley Middle School. It's comprised of four simple elements that when we put them together, create a fun, safe environment that supports the learning for all students. So the first piece of this is choose your attitude. We've all had those days when we just don't want to. We don't want to go to work, we don't want to go to school, write that essay, take that test but we do them because we have to. If we choose to do our work, write the essays, take the tests, whatever, with a positive attitude, none of it would feel so yucky. So the eighth grade team felt that two students who really personified this tenet of the fish philosophy and always did their best to put a positive spin on things were Logan Bernier and Kira Day. The next uh, part of the fish philosophy is be there. Now this doesn't mean we turn every classroom into a group therapy session. In fact, this element of the FISH philosophy is for the students to focus on themselves as individuals and not other people. When choose, students choose to be there, uh, they are engaged and focused in the class. These students are mentally present and in the moment. When students can focus their energy and attention to the task at hand, we see two benefits. They're academically successful and often their classmates just follow suit. So the two students that we saw as uh, being there for themselves and others uh, were Ethan Lebrecht and Julia Tuttle. The third element of the fish philosophy is when we do look to the bigger group. This element is make their day. Can you imagine a world where everyone you meet simply did something kind or helpful for you and for others? That type of behavior is infectious and can really propel a school culture to be a warm and inviting place for all people. For this one, we have three students to recognize. They all make our days in their own unique way, but we all agree that once you've spent time with them, you're left with a smile on your face. So congratulations to Michael Lovell, Cash Samard, and Catherine Welch for being our day makers. The last part of the fish philosophy is play. And now this doesn't mean that we make a game out of everything or don't take learning seriously, because we do. Um, this part of the fish philosophy is about having fun while you work. If you're not familiar with Pike's Place Fish Market in Seattle, I suggest that you look it up. The men who work there start early and end late. They're on their feet all day and they do backbreaking work. 
They do heavy lifting, they throw fish, they use silly voices, and make it the best experience that they can for themselves and the shoppers. And so the two students that we felt uh, who made our classrooms livelier this year are Jack Buecher and Leah Dole. And up next we have Mrs. Lemieux to give out a few awards for academic excellence. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Good evening. I just want to tell everyone how excited I am to be participating in my first eighth grade graduation and how much I have enjoyed spending time with all of you. Academic excellence. In order to receive this award, you must, you must achieve a 2.8 or higher in all four core subjects, math, ELA, science, and social studies. Normally, this award is given over the three trimesters, but due to the unusual circumstances, we've looked at just the first two trimesters. Academic excellence. First recipient would be Evelyn Bennett, Adriana Perini, Connor Cormier, Lexi Surrett, Gage True, and Bo Miller. Congratulations on a job well done. And now we'll hear from Mr. Bridges. Good evening and congratulations to the eighth graders who are graduating and um, hello to the families and friends. Uh, our society that we live in, in our world, is more connected now than it has ever been. For example, each minute there are 300 hours of video uploaded to YouTube. That's 2,628,000 hours each year. The average human lifespan is only 672,000 hours. There are four lifetimes of video content placed on YouTube every year. Now, you may hear this, and as a teenager, you're probably thrilled at the hours of video consumption that await you. Tonight, however, I want, to th I want you to think about this differently. Those numbers that I shared with you are also evidence of a less obvious reality. We have the opportunity to create and share like never before. Our work over the last few months has been new and different. Through it all, it still holds true, though, that the true purpose of education is to share. Teaching is getting people to learn the nature of their gifts, and then we hope that they will discover how to use them, how to share them for good in the world. For the students who I am about to announce, an unprecedented emergency in the physical distance that the emergency warranted was not enough to keep these students from progressing. It was not enough to keep them from having hope for their futures. This emergency for these kids may have shown them more about their gifts than we could have done if we were all together. On behalf of all educators, I would like to take some time right now to recognize our eighth grade remote learning rock stars. Emma Belanger, Colby Hanscom, Caleb Bacchiano, Carter Belanger, Lexi Surrett, Kira Day, James Ritter, Elise St. Pierre Hermans, Brady Metcalf, Parker Day, Adriana Perini, Francesca Muccio, Cam Teal, Michael Lovell, Evelyn Bennett, Lindsay Fox, James Higby, Haley Wing, Connor Cormier, and Bo Miller. Thank you so much. time of our presentation where we're going to give some academic awards for our content areas and these grades are, uh, these awards are not necessarily based on grade point averages or those kinds of things but truly about uh, the students who showed a love for these particular content areas so I will tell you I'm here to present some reading awards and over the course of my career I have definitely seen a dramatic decline in the number of students who still like to read for pleasure once they get to eighth grade in all fairness, the average middle schooler often does have a jam-packed schedule 
with obligations outside of the school day, sports, scouts, helping around the house, etc. Uh, but when kids have free time, they do seem to spend most of it on social media or online gaming. It is why every year I'd like to shine the spotlight on students who still feed their love of reading. Many of you will probably not be surprised by the students chosen this year. Both of them have always had a book or five in tow. <laughs> this year's bookworms are Bo Miller and Ethan Patterson. In the science classroom, um, the things that we uh, preach and we, and we go over each time is a set of skills that um, students are developing still while they're in middle school. Uh, it's only the second year where science has been um, part of their schedule each day. Um, I love to see these kids develop these skills even more in eighth grade. Uh, it takes perseverance and courage to be uh, on the top of the science heap, because it does take a lot of failures to figure out how exactly the natural world works. Um, and some students are better at sort of taking on those challenges in the science classroom um, with the bravery and, and all the other skills that they need in order to, to um, push their limits of observation. And uh, those students for science this year in eighth grade were Aaron Doyle and Alexa Schroeder. Next up, we'll have Miss Lemieux for history. Um, I think history is one of those subjects. You either like it or you don't. I haven't seemed to find any students in the middle ground. I've loved history since my freshman year, when my history teacher, pacing back and forth at the front of the room, he made history come alive for me. I held on to his every single word. He took me places that I could never go. And he helped me experience events that had long since passed but became very meaningful to me. I have tried to bring that love of history to my students. I will not say that I have always been successful. And while it pains me, some students still see history as boring and they don't see the importance of it. But I have two students. When I was asked to present this award, there were two students that immediately came to mind who have... If they have not enjoyed history, they have made it more enjoyable for me this year. The first student came to class every day with a positive attitude and unbridled enthusiasm for learning. No matter what the topic, this student had thoughts to share and he was not hesitant to offer up his opinions. He had a curiosity about history and he asked probing questions, wanting to know how or why certain events happened. And he was open to everybody's opinions. The first recipient of the Historian, of Historian Award goes to Caleb Vacchiano. And Caleb, I want to thank you for your enthusiasm and your curiosity. And also, thanks for wanting me to run for president. <laughs> Maybe someday you will run, and then I can vote for you. The second student, while she is not necessarily a quiet student, she had a quiet, reflective nature when coming to history. She consistently made connections between events that had occurred and the impact or the influence those events had on shaping society and culture. This student understands the relationship between what was, what is now, and how those influence what is to come. The second historian award goes to Audrey Barrett, and I want to thank you, Audrey, for offering up different perspectives on how history has shaped our society. I know this, this may not be the time, but I'm going to take it anyway. I just wanted to take this opportunity to tell the eighth grade students how much I have enjoyed getting to know you this year. You, I have seen your serious side, your humorous side, and your silly side. I have watched you chatter in the hallways, and I have watched you coming and going from the classroom, and I am truly filled with admiration, admiration for the relationships that you have with one another. It became very obvious to me that this class has a strong bond, and that you support one another. Those traits will serve you well as adults. Each of you is unique, and I believe with all my heart that you are all destined to do, to do great things. Good luck at the high school, and while I won't be here next year, I do look forward to hearing of your accomplishments and your successes. Thank you. That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> um, 
I am here to present the last two academic awards, which fall under the curriculum of math. Each year I'm honored to recognize students for their work in mathematics. I have a long list of students who have worked hard all year, who participate in class, um, but there are two students who, in my eyes, really took the time to understand what was being taught. They asked questions, which evoked a deeper understanding of the concepts. Uh, they wanted to make sure they understood the process and how the numbers work together, uh, not just make sure their answers were correct. The recipients of the 2020 Mathematician Awards are Lexi Surrett and Gage True. Congratulations to both of you. You are a joy to have in class. Together each year in the fall, we set out as a class to write charters for us all to follow so that we can feel the way we want to when we're at school. In summary, each year we point out to treat people the way that you would like to be treated. Some of the truisms we write into this document may seem routine. Students each year scoff at the simplicity of the details of the charter. They are too old to hear about the golden rule. Each year still, Students who fail to follow the charter are the largest barrier to our district achieving the goals that we have for our students. As a teacher, there's nothing better than having a student in, in class that never needs to be reminded of this document. A student that is an adolescent is able to show each day that they understand their rights, duties, and privileges of being a student here at SVMS. A student wise beyond their years in empathy and because they understand our differences, they choose to respect everyone. This student exemplifies all the qualities and all these qualities while they are at school every day. They report bright-eyed and bushy-tailed each morning to the SVM Morning News. It is their duty here to make sure that our school is informed and starts and we all start our day off on a positive note. These duties continue into the classroom. This student understands the privilege of education and always works hard. While excelling in the classroom, they never forget that their peers should also have their best chance at being successful there. In addition, they never back down from those extras that many students pass on. This student has participated in the Kids Teaching Kids Technology Day, and she has traveled to the MLTI conference in Orono. After the bell, in sports, or on the student council, this student continues to work to make our school something that we can all be proud of. Outside of school, she has participated in Girl Scouts for eight years, from daisies to cadet, and soon she'll be bridging to the senior level. As part of 2271, she has earned too many badges to count. Most recently, she has worked with her troop on several local craft fairs, both booth sales, as well as local agricultural and artisan festivals. She has taken the lead to raise money for local animal shelter and helped to raise money to donate Girl Scout cookies to end 68 hours of hunger and to our local elderly population during COVID-19. This year's recipient of the Sacque Valley Citizenship Award is Francesca Muccio. As our ceremony comes to a close, I find myself, as many others have mentioned, thinking of all the years of experiences that I have with so many of you. I remember seeing some of you walking into the gym of our various elementary schools, bouncing with enthusiasm, and taking each and every new experience that you could get your hands on and just soaking it up. As you moved on to the middle school, so did I. Then I was lucky enough to meet so many more of you. Now, as your time at SVMS comes to a close, we prepare to watch you walk into the high school still full of enthusiasm of what your futures may bring. I have thoroughly enjoyed watching you all grow up and develop into the young people that you're choosing to become. You have worked so hard and shown all of us just how resilient, resilient you can be and capable you are. 
Please know that we're all very proud of you for all of your efforts and the growth that you've made during your time with us here at SBMS. I'd like to thank you for the memories that you're leaving me with. And to conclude the ceremony, please enjoy this slideshow that your teachers have spent many, many hours preparing for you um, with some special help along the way from some contributors that you may know hopefully well. <laughs> um, and please don't forget that we're always here for you if you need us just right across that field that you'll be walking up from soon, but back whenever you have a chance. Welcome parents. Family.